Good morning and welcome to our webinar on certifications overview for women owned small businesses. That's the topic for today. And we're very excited to be able to present this to you. My name is James Forrest. I'm the program coordinator from NorCal PTAC. I'll talk a little bit about what NorCal PTAC is in a minute. Um, Nancy Pigeon is one of our procurement specialists with NorCal PTAC. Um, so she's a counselor and expert in government contracting. She's gonna be giving the main presentation today. And we're gonna to get to both of these things in a minute. But first we wanna hand things over to Darlene Neal, who is the director of the Women's Business Center at the A New America o Oakland Center. Um, so we're very happy to have uh, a partnership here with Darlene, who is uh, a super friendly person. And um, so uh, let's just give Darlene a little bit of time to talk about a partner program. And then and the emphasis is that this is a resource that's available to all of you. So yes. take it away, Darlene. Great, thank you, James. And welcome everyone to the seminar and to National Women's Business Month. And so I want to thank you for joining us today and to talk to you a little bit about what we do at A New America. We are a 20 year old nonprofit and our goal is to be a service here in the community, a resource to help individuals, whether they're starting their business or looking at an existing business and ways to pivot and to expand. We offer a variety of services from one-on-one -on -one consulting to training courses, as well as consulting and counseling services. So you can visit our website um, at anewamerica.org and you can see our calendar of services that we provide, as well as the training courses that we offer. Again, we wanna thank you all for joining us today and we welcome you all to this great webinar that we'll be presenting today. Right. And I think we have a little bit about the general WBCs. Yes. And so as part of the Women Business Centers, there is a network of Women Business Centers located throughout the city of Oakland, as well as in San Jose. Um, in addition to other partners we have, there are over 100 Women Business Centers that provide educational um, services to you. And so with that, there's territories that you can con um, contact. You can visit CaliforniaWBC.org to find out more information about WBCs in your area. And so we listed the six that are here local to the area, and we are all available to assist you with educational services, as well as looking at us as a resource to help you through products that you may need to look at, or whether it's services or lending, um, opportunity. So again, you're welcome to contact us and we are here to be of service to you. Thank you very much, James, and take it away. Thank you, Darlene, for the partnership. Um, we've highlighted on the map here these women's business centers um, and the, the, the cutout here, you'll see it jumps from two to four. Um, these are the service areas that are in uh, our, the, the centers that are in our service areas. So you'll see these two maps, uh, the same basic cutout. Um, so what is uh, PTAC and, and who are we and why are we talking about either of these programs? NorCal PTAC is the Northern California Procurement Technical Assistance Center. It's a mouthful. We go by North, NorCal PTAC for short, and I'll try to keep this introduction short. Basically, we're a nonprofit service as well. Another resource that's available to you um, in 2020 alone, our clients won more than $314 million in government contracts. That number goes up every year, and we're rather proud of being able to put money, um, your tax dollars back into the pockets of small business owners and their employees. And the way we do this, we assist our clients is with three basic core services. We offer one-on-one -on -one counseling on just about any topic related to government contracting you can think of. Um, so of course, certifications, but also a host of other ones, um, marketplace research, uh, getting um, uh, bid compliance, reviewing RFPs, all sorts of things. If you apply to be a client, you're eligible for that. And you are also eligible for custom bid matching. Basically, it's, it's going to find bids on the internet and then put them in your inbox that match criteria of what you sell. And then we offer resources and training. So we're putting on webinars like these with partners. We're also joining other webinars um, and we're doing this more or less constantly. If you want to be a client of ours, you get access to these first two options. Anyone is available to join the resources and trainings. So we have folks from New York and all over the place today. Welcome. Um, but if you want if you want one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling, custom bid matching, you have to have a business that is set up and ready to go making sales. You have to be, uh, that business has to have an address, a primary address in this service area. 
So if you see this area in green here, um, this is our service area. There are tons of other PTACs across the country. Um, you can find your local PTAC with that link there. You can see find your local PTAC, aptac-us slash dot org slash find a PTAC, or just Google your county name and then the letter is PTAC. Usually comes up with the first search there, your local PTAC. Um, but if you're in any of these 15 counties in Northern California, you can apply for our services. If you're outside of that and you apply, I will um, have to reject your application. I'll redirect you somewhere else. Um, and then, of course, you have to be interested in government contracting. So if you're looking for assistance with grants or business setup or a business plan or something else, we won't be able to assist you. But um, be in business, be in our service area, and be interested in con contracting, and we'll be happy to help you out, um, regardless of whether you're a small business or a large business. All right. Um, so go ahead and apply on our website if you're interested, norcalptech.org. Like I said, um, we uh, can get, provide all of our services remotely. We have procurement specialists across the country. I'm located in Eureka, California, and up in the far north of our area um, in Humboldt County. Um, but like I said, we can meet with you from anywhere. All right, we're here to learn about certifications overview for women-owned small businesses. And we have an extremely qualified presenter, Nancy Pigeon, who is um, one of our uh, very lovely procurement specialists. Mm -hmm. So you're in really, really good hands with her and she's gonna take it away here. So thanks, Nancy. And thanks everyone for joining. One more reminder, uh, we we're recording this session, the video as well as the slides will be sent to everyone later today. And if you have any questions, any questions at all that pop into your head, please enter them into the Q&A window, not the chat. So the chat is for networking, technical issues, saying hi, et cetera. The Q&A is when you want a question read aloud. <clears throat> We're gonna be putting a couple Q&A sessions throughout the presentation today. So don't delay putting those questions as they pop up in your head, pop them into the Q&A panel and we can follow along together. All right, thanks, Nancy. Go ahead and take it away. Looking forward hey, to your presentation. Um, uh, James, could you? Put up that poll while I talk about myself. <laughs> Let's go ahead and put that yeah. poll on one second. Yeah, time. thank you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, launching poll one. Okay. Uh, how, how familiar are you with certifications for women-owned businesses? So you can just go ahead and answer your answer. At, yeah, if you just want to, you know, go ahead and pop in there uh, your answer. And, you know, that'll give me an idea of, uh, you know, the program today and, and, and how to move forward. Uh, in the meantime, I'll introduce myself. Uh, uh, like James said, Nancy Pigeon, procurement specialist here at NorCal PTAC. Um, I've been here about two years. Um, prior to that, uh, I was in the, the Air Force, active duty uh, for 22 years and 12 of those years I was in contracting. Um, when I retired, I moved on to federal government contracting, um, Air Force civilian, Veterans Affairs, Bureau of Reclamation, that's where I spent the last four years. Um, and I was a small business specialist, which really um, helped me grow a love for small businesses and helping them out. And that's was a perfect transition over to being a NorCal PTAC counselor. Um, my specialty, of, of course, is federal contracting, but um, I do pretty good with the California state contracting now after two years. And uh, I, I definitely enjoy the one-on-one -on -one counseling and um, helping develop a plan individually for, for each uh, for each of my clients. Um, do you want to close that poll now? Did, it, did we get a good response on that, James? We are getting an excellent response. Actually, 68% of folks have responded, which is in my nice. opinion, phenomenal. So um, <laughs> I'll end the poll here, 69? Okay, 70%, um, woo, we made it, okay. All right. Uh, Looks like we have, do you, want me, do you want to go over it? Do you want me to go over it, Nancy? Can you see uh, the can you, can you publish it so we can all see it? Oh, okay. All right, how about that? Is that available? I'm frustrated, I'm confused. Okay, so we have a few that are certified. I'm confused about different certifications. Hopefully we can clear that up today. I'm frustrated. There's a lot of people frustrated, trust me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I know nothing about certifications and I'm familiar, but just haven't gotten them. Okay, all right, that's good. Okay, we'll go ahead and close that. Thank you everyone for participating and uh, if I could get the slides to move. Okay, I think I passed. No, this is right. Uh oh, I'm having technical difficulty. Okay, to begin this program, um, disclosure: uh, the information that I'm presenting herein is um, current as of 
you know, today. Um, but as of everything in contracting, it changes daily. So um, if I have something in here and you're reading it, you know, a few months from now, just double check to make sure that uh, what I've said is, is still accurate because um, things change daily um, in the government. So our agenda for today, we're gonna talk about um, what are government certifications? So kind of an overview of that. Um, why are they valuable? Um, and then we'll get into the meat of the, uh, the presentation, uh, presenting the federal woman-owned and economically disadvantaged woman-owned small business certification. I'm gonna go through um, what's required for them. And then we'll talk about the disadvantaged business entity, which is a kind of a federal uh, via the state certification. And then we'll talk about the women's enterprise WB certification, which is for um, some of the cities and the counties except this one, but it's through the California Public Utilities Commission. And then I'll talk about some other third certifications you can go for that aren't necessarily um, catered to women-owned small businesses, more about economic and uh, minority and um, other issues like that. But I just want to give you an idea of all the certifications that are out there. Um, oh, and just one more thing, you know, this is an overview. There's a lot of information to go through. You're not going to be an expert today on, you know, certification. So um, if this piques your interest in getting certified, please work with your PTAC counselor if you already have one. Um, or, you know, go to your local PTAC and sign up and work with a counselor. Um, it's always easier to work with the counselor than to um, be out there on your own trying to figure things out. Um, so definitely look that up. Okay, so small business, small business certifications or woman-owned certifications. Um, you should think of them as professional certifications. So uh, when you go to get a professional certification, you're, you know, you're showing your knowledge, your, um, your capability of, of being able to do that. It's the same thing for your company. Um, you have to go through and present a lot of information and verify that your company, you know, is, is woman-owned. Um, you have to present a lot of paperwork. Um, so it is a kind of a status thing to go through. Um, so consider it the same as if you're getting a professional certification, but it's for your business. And then we talked about what the ones we we're gonna talk about today, uh, the woman owned and the economically disadvantaged, which are federal certifications, uh, the WBE, which is more of a state certification and then the DBE, which is a federal via the state certification. Um, and then why are certifications valuable? Um, I only have numbers for the federal um, percentages, but uh, the government agencies are mandated to award a substantial number of contracts um, to small businesses. Uh, the annual goal is 23%, and that's for all businesses. We'll talk about women-owned in a minute. Um, so in FY 2021, um, they've awarded 25.55% to small businesses. Um, and usually the federal government purchases about 600 billion in goods and services from private sectors every year. Um, so in FY 2021, so far they've done 476 billion and 122 billion of that went to all small businesses. Um, it may seem like they're, that they're not there yet, but um, all the numbers aren't in yet because the DOD has a 90 day delay in reporting their numbers. Um, so it will, it will eventually crawl up to that around that 600 billion uh, number. Um, certifications help set your company apart in the marketplace. So um, the government's always looking for a well-known small business or EDWSBs or, um, or other uh, socioeconomics such as A to A's or, um, disabled veterans, um, hub zone, and those types of things. So certifications give you, um, like I said, the, you know, the professional status of your business. Um, and you can take advantage of all these different programs and set asides for your socioeconomics. So that's why they're valuable. Um, they're also valuable because prime contractors get passed along a subcontracting goal. And so they are also responsible for um, contracting with small businesses under socioeconomic, so woman-owned, EDWSB, hub zone, the ones I mentioned earlier. So that's why government certifications are valuable. And now we're going to go into the woman-owned small business certification. 
the economically disadvantaged woman owned small business certification. <laughs> and these are done through the Small Business Administration, the SBA. And this is a federal certification. Um, a lot of people get the federal and the state, um, the, uh, the women's business councils. Um, so people get them mixed up. This is a separate one that you have to go through. Um, if you go through um, uh, one of the Chamber of Commerce's, or if you go through the Clearinghouse, um, those are not the federal woman-owned small business certification. You'll still have to apply for the woman-owned small business certification. Um, I just wanna make that clear because a lot of people um, get them mixed up. Um, it is a separate certification that you have to go through. Okay, here's the purpose. Um, we'll, we'll just cruise through this really quick. Um, it was established so that women-owned small business have an equal opportunity to participate in federal contracting. Um, this is to help, um, especially in um, uh, industries where they're, they're male-dominated industries. Um, so some of those you'll see women-owned small business set-asides or economically disadvantaged women set-asides. And so <clears throat> um, that was a reason for the program is to, to give women a, a, a foot up in those industries. Um, the benefits of the WSB, like I said, um, it's set aside contracts. Um, and those are for specific NAICs. I did include the NAICs table here that you can go look at um, to check your NAICs code. Um, if you don't know what a NAICs is, it's a North American, um, uh, North American Indice. Yeah, North American. Industry classification. Uh, the industry classification system. Sorry, thanks, James. You rescued me. <laughs> um, so, uh, and that's what the government goes off of for your business. Um, so, if you're going to do business with the federal government, you'll have to find your NAICs, and sometimes that can be a pain. Um, but that's what the uh, EDWSB and the WSB are based off of. Um, and this is for set aside contracts. You can still get a WSB certification, um, but if you're not on this NAICS table, um, you won't be able to compete for set aside contracts. So um, just a clarification there, you can still have the certification, but you may not qualify for set aside contracts. Um, another benefit is sole source contracts, but these are pretty rare. Um, they're only for specific NAICS. Um, and it's only if there are no other women owned small business or EDWSBs that can compete with you for the contract. So like I said, it's really rare. It's kind of a unicorn thing. Um, if you're a woman owned small business and you just happen to have something that no one else makes at the moment, you have the patent on it and the government really wants it, um, you could probably get a sole source contract. But like I said, it's, it's kind of rare. <laughs> and then again, the subcontracting preference is one of the benefits. Um, so if a prime contractor is looking for a woman owned small business or an economically disadvantaged so that they can meet their goals for the federal government. Um, that's the preference. So those are some of the benefits of the program. Let's see, forgot these have fly-ins here. Um, so let's talk about the goal really quick. The SBA has um, a government-wide goal for participation of small business. Um, the goal is usually and historically been 5% of federal contracts. And here you can see some statistics. Um, I got these yesterday. So um, as you can see, we're still behind a little bit for this year, but like I said, the DOD um, has a 90 day delay in reporting. So hopefully that's gonna move up closer to uh, the 5% range. Um, so you can see the only year they've made it in the past four years is FY19, they made the 5%, which was $26 billion. So. Um, so they're right around 26 billion, um, and I imagine this year will probably be around the same. Um, so that's 26 billion dollars that women-owned small businesses or uh, economically disadvantaged women-owned businesses can um, try to get. <laughs> um, and they do lump WSB, ED, WSB together in these statistics. So, okay, eligibility. So here we go, the good stuff. Um, to be eligible for a woman's contracting program, you have to be a small business, and that's based on your NAICS code. 
and either your number of employees or um, your annual receipts. Um, and if you click on that link that says small business, it will tell you um, and tell you what it is. Um, you have to be at least 51% unconditionally owned and controlled by women who are US citizens. And you must have women manage the day-to-day -day operations and also make long-term decisions. Here's the definition of unconditional ownership. The company must be at least 51% unconditionally and directly owned by one or more women. The direct means of that ownership cannot be through a holding company or another vehicle um, with a limited exception of a revocable trust. So if you, have a, if you are the owner of a business through a revocable trust, you could still apply uh, for the woman-owned small business. Um, unconditional means that ownership cannot be subject to acquisition. In other words, someone can't come in and do a sudden takeover of your company, you have to be um, you have to be firmly in control of the company and the board of directors and um, whatever it is. If you're a corporation LLC, um, there can't be any way for someone to come and take the company away from you. Um, more on, con on unconditional control, um, women must control long-term decision making, control day-to-day -day management, um, devote full time to the business, so you can't have another job. Um, um, I recently had someone where she's, she's working another job but trying to stand up her business and I had to tell her she wouldn't be eligible for the woman-owned small business because um, you can't have outside employment. Um, you have to devote full time to the business. Um, and so that's kind of a downside if you're an entrepreneur and, and doing a startup but you still have to work your other job. Um, so if you're already in that position, um, you won't be able to apply. Um, until um, you've made a go of it and your, um, um, your company's succeeding and you're devoting full time to it. Uh, men or other entities can be involved in the management. Um, and sometimes, you know, they own the licenses. Say if you're a, you're a woman, you own a construction company, but the men hold the uh, construction licenses. That's fine as long as you are still in control and you make all the decisions. Um, so just to be clear on that. Okay, so what I just talked about was for woman-owned small business. Um, so you have to meet all of those requirements um, and that's uh, um, a fairly easy application. I'm gonna say easy, but you know, um, take that with a grain of salt because um, it's easy compared with doing the EDWSB program requirements. So for EDWSB, you have to meet all the requirements that I just talked about for the women's contracting program. Um, but there are a number of um, economic, um, economic things that you have to meet. So example, be owned and controlled by one or more women, which each with a personal net worth less than 750,000. And then be owned and controlled by one or more women, each with 350,000 or less in adjusted gross income averaged over the previous three years. Be owned and controlled by one or more women, each $6 million or less in personal assets. So you have to meet all three of these requirements. Um, and sometimes that's, um, that's hard to, to go through, especially if you're married um, because your husband's assets are also included. Um, if, you're one, if your adjusted gross income over the past three years exceeds 350,000, um, the SBA will presume that you're not economically disadvantaged. Um, however, in that number, you may exclude LLC as corporate partnership income if you can prove that you put the income back into the company or use it to pay company taxes. The income also includes all sources, not just W-2. So it's ownership draws, bonuses, company stock and little cash. So anything you take out of the company will be considered part of your income. Um, if you happen to win the lottery or um, an inheritance, um, you can rebut that. Um, income as an unusual source that only happens once and it's not a, um, a continual source of income to you. So let's talk about the work net worth. Women's adjusted net worth must be under 750,000. And adjusted means the following are excluded, the equity in your personal residence, the equity in the business and income from the business if you reinvest it back into the company or pay the taxes. Um, also excluded are the funds in your 401k or a similar retirement account. 
and then unadjusted net worth must not exceed 6 million. And the 401ks and the sim similar retirement accounts are excluded, but your primary residence and the value of the EDWSB is included. Okay, and then you must submit the financial information for your spouse unless there's a legal separation. So if you're legally separated in the middle of the divorce, um, you wouldn't have to provide that. You'll just have to sell your legal separation paperwork with the file. Um, your spouse's financial situation will be considered when a spouse has a role in the business, has lent money to or provided credit or financial support to or guaranteed a loan to the business. So if your spouse is working with you in any way to um, provide money or um, put up collateral, um, their, their finances are going to count. Um, and also it will count if your spouse is in a similar line as you. Um, so say your husband has a construction business and you have a construction business. Um, those are kind of the same, um, especially if they share a similar name or website or equipment, or if you move employees back and forth, um, that's going to make you have to include your spouse's financial because they're helping you with your company. Okay, so I ran through those. Um, those were the main requirements of um, the WSB, EDWSB. Um, like I said, the WSB is much easier to apply for. It's just based on um, proving that you're the woman um, of the business, um, that you run the company, um, that you have the, uh, the management and the know-how to run your company, that you are devoted full-time to your company. Um, that is for the woman-owned small business. Now the EDWSB, um, they're gonna get in deep into your financial records, um, your finances, they're gonna want all of those documents. So it's a bit tougher um, to get through that application. Um, I try to tell clients if you're going for the EDWSB, the best thing to do is to check that um, the table to see if your NAICS, um, to see if your NAICS qualifies for the EDWSB. Um, because it, there's no point in really putting in for the EDWSB to get a set aside if you aren't on the NAICS. So um, if you don't want to open yourself up to all the financials, um, I suggest just getting the WSB um, unless your NAICS is on that table. Um, to apply, you have to have a DUNS and be registered in SAM. Um, and as of last year, um, there's only two ways to get certified. Um, the SBA certification site, which I have a link here, and that's for free. I do suggest, however, that you get with your PTAC counselor to go through this. Um, there's, there's a lot of issues with it. Um, there's a lot of people still waiting for their certifications. Um, it was, it's just been backed up ever since they brought it online. And it's, it's not an easy process and it's not fun to wait around for. Um, however, if your, if your application has gone to being, um, being in the review status, if you happen to apply for a set aside for women on small business, the contracting officer can call and get your certification expedited. Um, you can also go through a third party certifier and I have their names down here below, but just note that this is gonna cost you. Um, and in the end, they do not, they do not apply for your certification through SBA. So once you go through them and you get certified through them, you still have to go to the SBA certification site and submit your application. Um, it's probably just a little bit easier because you're going to say, yes, I'm certified through this company. And, um, but please know that it's still another step. Just because you get certified through these does not mean you're SBA certified and it's not going to show up on your record. Um, so for more in-depth, I am doing an October 28th webinar and I'm going to walk through the application step by step. Um, so if you want to do that, go ahead and sign up for that and we can get a little more in depth with that application and the requirements and um, I'll go a little more in depth on that. We have three certifications to get through today. So um, um, that's a little more in depth for you. And this is the website. Um, if you click on this, when you get the slides, it'll take you to the website. And then we're going to take any questions that came in for WSB, EDWSB. Okay, um, yeah, I've been answering some of the questions okay. that 
typing in there, uh, but I, we have plenty of questions to go around. Let me just bring back up the window here. Okay. Um, first question comes from, oh, and by the way, Nancy, we're, we are on a time schedule, so uh, we can answer a couple and just tell me when you want to cut off and move, no hard feelings. Yeah, because we have a lot to go through. <laughs> yeah. Slide still, yeah. Uh, this was a really long presentation, so. Yeah. Teresa Lakes is asking, should a woman-owned business get the state certification before the federal one? Well, there is no state woman-owned small business certification. There's the, um, uh, the one gonna, yeah, the one I'm going to talk about. Um, there's the DBE, which is state and federal, and then the uh, California Public Utilities Commission, the WEBE through them, which um, cities and, and local governments also accept. But there is no woman-owned small business state certification. Um, so to answer that, you know, it's just going to depend on your business. So I would get with your counselor and see what works best for you. Okay. Uh, um, the two NAICS codes list are the only codes for the W. No, OS that was, I'm okay. sorry. <laughs> no, that was just a sample. If you click on the link, it'll take you to the full table. All right. Um, and will the WBNC Women Business Enterprise National Council cover the WBE requirements across the country? Um, if that's the third party, cert one of the, I think it is one of the third party certifiers, you still have to go into the SBA and get certified through the SBA. So that, that question, the answer is no. Yes and no, I guess. <laughs> um, what's the difference uh, in self-certifying in SAM versus being certified by the SBA? We're able to select WOSB and SAM. Um, are we not able to go after solicitations that are set aside until we can actually qualify for the certifications? Yeah, right. Um, there is no self-certifying in SAM anymore. When, if you click that saying you're a woman-owned you're woman small business, that means you, you're actually certified through SBA. Um, so if you're selecting that, um, you're saying you're self-certified, but you're not really certified. You still have to go through the SBA and get certified. Um, like I said, if you're going after a set-aside um, and you have your application in and it's being processed, if you happen to win that set-aside, you can get the contracting officer to call um, SBA to get it expedited. Okay. Perfect. And um, so Debbie King's asking, we can't put on the small business definition. Everyone's going to get the slides. Yeah, you're going to get the slides. Um, expand on the definition quickly. The definition for small yeah, business. Yeah. Can we just move on? Uh, so then you mean if yeah. it, Another question or to that? Yeah. Rest of the presentation. Right. Um, yeah. Um, so I'll skip that one too. Uh, <clears throat> is uh, getting certified only beneficial if we plan on getting government contracts? That's a good general question. Yeah. I mean, if you're not going to get federal government contracts, then there's no point in going through the certification process. Um, you may want to go through and get, uh, you know, through the Chamber of Commerce or through. Uh, um, the Public Utilities uh, Commission. Um, I think we should probably move on. Okay. We got what? No, there's like 16 left in there. We got plenty of questions. Um, if you have any unanswered okay. questions, please reach out to me. Um, you can see my phone number and my uh, email address there, and we will see if we can get a answer to your question. But in the interest of time, we've got a really good audience participation today and that's great. Keep asking questions. We'll see what we can do. All yeah. right, thanks. Keep it moving. Okay, sorry, let me move that now. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the uh, Disadvantaged Business Entity Certification, the California Unified Certification Program. Um, and this is a federal certification, but it's done via the state. So when the state receives funds from the Department of Trans the U.S. Department of Transportation, um, assisted contracts for um, highway transit or airport, um, if they receive federal money, then um, they're required to do um, small business goals. So um, to create a playing level, level playing field on which DBEs can complete fairly for DOT assisted contracts, they've set up this program where you can get a disadvantaged business entity um, 
certification to work on DOT assisted contracts. So when I say it's a federal certification via the state, um, it's a federal certification to work on the DOT assisted contracts, but the certification comes through the state board. Um, And so they, they want to meet these certifications here. Um, so it's designed to ensure DB firms can compete fairly for federally funded transportation. I think I already said that. Um, a disadvantaged owner must be a US citizen or a resident alien and meet the federal definition of socially and economically disadvantaged as defined in the Code of Federal Regulations. And the reason we're putting this one up here today because this is this specific calls out the presumptive group that includes women. Um, and then, of course, Black Americans, Hispanic Americans, um, a number of minorities can also um, apply for this. Um, if you're not in one of these categories, but you're found to be socially or economically disadvantaged on a case by case basis, you could also get a certification, but it's, um, it's a lot to put in to prove that. Um, benefits, um, certification is recognized by 600 local agencies in California. It expands opportunities to participate in federally funded projects, um, become accessible to prime contractors. Again, prime contractors are required to um, fill small business goals, so they do need DBE participation goal requirements. Um, you'll be listed in the DBE database, which contractors use to find subcontractors. Um, also increase op opportunities to network such as procurement fairs and pre-bids. So if you go there and you say you're a DBE, um, you can give out your information um, and they'll be very interested in, in you. Um, you're also eligible for the mentor protege opportunities such as Caltrans Cal mentor programs. Um, every state has a unified certification program to um, determine the certification status in that state. Um, so this one is the California Unified Certification Program. However, not all the member agencies conduct certification. There are certain ones that will do the certification. Um, they all operate under one agreement. So they all work together to do the certifi certifying board. Um, it's a one-stop shopping certification service. So they have a website that you go to, which I'll show you, um, where you load up all of your information and it'll go to a certain agency. Um, to go through the process. So there are different agencies and they each break up who's gonna do the certification review. Okay, your business must be 51% owned by a socially and economically disadvantaged individual. 51% owners must possess the required license or credential if required by law to own and or control a certain type of firm. And the 51% majority owner must not exceed the personal net worth of $1.32 million. Um, so there's the basics for the requirements. If you kind of meet those, you can start looking into this. If uh, you provide um, some type of service or um, item that goes into type, uh, construction type work, such as Caltrans, um, the transportation or um, FFA, FAA at the airport. Um, only an independent business may be certified as a DBE. So you have to be independent. You can't be um, like a franchise or um, dependent on another business um, to do your work. Um, the three-year average gross receipts cannot exceed 26.29 million. And uh, she said here varies by industry and it's soon to be extended to a five-year average, which is good because it'll spread out your, your income a little bit there. Um, and then, like I said before, the department presumes certain groups are disadvantaged um, and women happens to be one of those categories. Um, and then, you know, all the minorities. And then at the bottom, there's a note again about if you are not in one of those groups, but you have a social and economic disadvantage that you can prove, um, you may still be still qualify and be on a case by case basis. And this is how to apply for the, but I first I want to talk about um, Liz Brazil is our expert in DBE. Um, so please, if you're interested in the DBE, um, sign up for her October 21st webinar and she's going to walk you through everything and give you more information. Mine was just an overview. 
um, to pique your interest in whether you would like to apply for it, but she can help you through that. Um, and this is the website that you go to. Um, and it's clickable, so once you get the slides, you'll be able to click and go in there. Um, you can read information about vendors, apply for certification. Um, there's a lot of good information in here. You can also look and see if they have any training coming up on how to apply. Um, but I highly recommend that you attend Liz's um, presentation. Okay, do we have any about DBE? Let's take a look through. Um, yeah, we're getting tons of questions. <laughs> that's, that's great. Thank you, guys. I see, <laughs> I see nine open. Yeah, I've answered. We've answered twenty-eight so far. So, um, um, I find one specifically for DBE. Uh, yeah. Is a disabled veteran a disadvantaged disadvantaged category for DBE? Uh, I didn't see it on there, no. So it's not, okay. Um, doo, doo, doo. How do these certifications help me get funding for my small business? That's sort of a general question. Yeah. Touched on a bit. Yeah, that's, that's like an SBDC question, really. Well, so there's fun, I mean, so these are for contracts, not grants or funding. Or, yeah, or, yeah. Um, so funding if you mean by contracts well they can help you get set asides and help you um, compete in that way but but i think nancy's touched on that in pretty good detail why they're useful um how well how long will it take to get certified <laughs> well the answer to that is always it depends um it depends on if you have all the information all the documents in for that um like the ws be the, the federal one, they say uh, 90 days for them to look at your package. And well, actually, no, it's like a couple of weeks, look at your package and then 90 days to approve. And I think they're up to like 120 days before they approve. Um, so they're way backed up. So if you're considering doing it, um, you need to get your application in. Um, for the DBE, I'm not really sure how long that takes. Um, that would be a good question for Liz if you take her, I re highly recommend you take her, um, um, you take her webinar. Um, she is like the expert on it um, and she can really answer all of those questions, how long it's taking and she can walk you through the checklist to see if you qualify. Um, mine, like I said, mine was just an overview of what's out there and what's available to you. Um, and I'm not the expert on it. Do I need a DUNS for DBA or is there one for yeah, the, the question is if you need a DUNS for your uh, doing business as for tip or, or is, I don't think you need two different DUNS numbers for a, no. for a fictitious business. No, whatever you registered in SAM is what you should use. Okay. And did you qualify as a startup if you're not in business yet? If you're not in business yet, then there's no use to, in applying for the certification. You need to be in business, you need to be registered, you need to have a DUNS number, you need to be registered in SAM. Putting the cart before the horse there, yeah. First yeah, <laughs> yeah get, in, get in business, uh, start making some money, have full-time devotion into the business. Right. There's all also, the yeah, even, all if those... you, even if you were able to get certified, there's you're not going to win a contract until you have some right. you're, you're yeah. on the ground ready to go. And that's a question that I get a lot is, yeah. I want to jump right into contracting. My business isn't yeah. even set up. It's like, yeah. Contracting is an advanced yeah. step. You want to be yeah. totally ready to go for it. So don't yeah. look at your certifications until you have your business plan set and ready right. to go. Exactly. Um, how long does the certification last? I think this might have actually been about the WOSB one. Um, do you have to recertify? Yeah, after? you have to recertify. And I think the WSB, I think it's every two years, if I remember correctly. Okay. And how often are the NAICS set asides updated? Every that... five years, I believe. Five years? Okay, we'll skip that one. Um, would the certifications also help for subcontracting? Yeah, I've already went over that. Yeah, um, big time. Prime, yeah, primes have the goals, and so they do. So yeah, they have to reach out to. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it helps with subcontracting. You get put yeah, on, yeah. you get put on a list, and you'll get called up. So. Oh yeah, I get emails all the time from large primes looking for DBE subcontractors constantly. So that's yeah. a very common, very common thing. 
Um, Lark, yes, you'll get, you're getting the presentation. Um, you'll get it. It's be on a website under resources later today. I think, she, says, I think she was saying, I hope we get through the whole thing today. <laughs> oh, through the presentation. <laughs> I'm working on it. Yeah. Um, All right. Shall we keep going? We to register in Sam. Can you address? I think you can answer some of those, James. Uh, yeah, I'll type okay. some of the questions after okay. this. All right, let's okay. keep going. Thanks, Nancy. Let's go. Okay, so this is the Women Owned Business Entity, the WBA, and this is through the California Public Utilities Commission. Um, I know I put state there, but I, I probably shouldn't have put state there, um, although it is a state board. Actual California does not have a woman owned business entity certification. The, um, the California, well, let me move on to the next slide, that probably helped. So the California Public Utilities Commission's um, required all investor owned electric gas water telecommunications um, that exceed 25 million to develop and implement a program to increase the utilization of women and minority business entities. Um, so this is the California Public Utility Commission is not necessarily the state. Um, this CPUC um, is over all of the telecommunication utility companies um, and they're requiring them to utilize women and minority owned business entities. Um, the supplier clearinghouse was created to manage the program. So when I say supplier clearinghouse, that's where you go through to get the WBE for the California Public Utilities Commission. Um, and I'm mentioning this because some of the, the cities and the counties will accept the WPE certification through the CPUC um, as being a woman owned business, since the state does not have a woman owned business certification. Um, the supplier clearinghouse continues to be commission supervised, whose primary purpose is to audit and verify the status of the WD WMDBEs. So it's woman owned, minority owned, uh, disabled veteran business entities, and then the LGBT entities. Um, so these are all the certifications that they do. Um, so you can qualify for a number of them. Um, if you're woman owned, you're minority and you're disabled veteran, you know, you're good to go there. Um, the DVBE, um, that comes from the state. So if you register with the state as a DVBE and you get certified, it automatically updates the supplier clearinghouse. You don't have to do a separate certification for DVBE. You do have to do one for the woman owned, the minority and the LGBT. Um, okay. So the procurement goal is 5% for women owned businesses, 15% for minority owned business um, were initially established, later expanded to, to include a goal of 1.5% for California based service disabled veteran owned businesses. Um, and like I said, if you register with the state, it automatically updates. There is no goal for LGBT owned firms as of yet. Okay, so you must be at least 51 per percent unconditionally owned by the individual who is a citizen of the United States, including permanent resident alien. Um, an individual's applicant US citizen, citizenship or permanent residency status shall be established and substantiated by the minimum threshold documentation. And they say this about all of them. Um, minimum threshold documentation is just the minimum amount of documentation to prove that you are US citizen, have permanent residency, are um, a racial or ethnic group, um, woman owned, you know, woman, I think that there's a minimum threshold documentation. So that's probably pretty easy to meet. Um, and then also for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, um, there's minimum threshold documentation. I don't know what it is, so don't ask me. Um, but just the minimum documentation to prove that you are in the group that you say you're in. Um, if you're in a partnership, 51% of the partnership must be unconditionally owned by minorities or women. Um, um, and it must be reflected in the current part concerns partnership agreement. Um, in the case of an applicant concern, which is a corporation, each class of voting stock and 51% of the aggregate of all outstanding stock must be. Connected. So the key number here is 51% if you noticed in all of these certifications. Um, so um, 
So you can say it, you can say, oh, well, I own 51%, but all the documentation must show that. You have to submit your documentation. You can't just say, well, I own 51%. Um, so when you're doing your documents, when you're starting up your business or before you put in for a certification, review all of your documents and make sure if you're the one putting in for it, it says exactly in those documents that you own 51%. If you own more, that's great. Um, but you know, if you're with a partner, you're the woman, um, you need to own 51% when you put that in. Um, and the documents need to reflect that. So go in and do those amendments, um, update your secretary of state, um, LLC, incorporation, stock, everything, because um, they're going to ask for those stock records. They're going to ask for all those documents. Um, so make sure the documents reflect exactly what you're saying. That's one of the big um, reasons for things get turned away is because your documents don't show that. And this is for all the certifications, not just this one. Um, and again, we're going back to the, the you know, the unconditional control and, um, and uh, direction. So um, again, you have to show that you exercise the power um, to direct the management of the day-to-day -day, as well as major decisions such as contracts, um, management policy. Um, so you notice in all three of these, you have to have unconditional control, unconditional management. Um, you can't just be a figurehead. That's what they're trying to get away from. That's why the woman-owned small business and the EDWSB went to an actual certification process um, because they were just putting a figurehead woman, um, but it was really um, men running the program behind the scenes. Um, so, you know, you can't, you know, hire a minority and say, okay, you're a 51% owner and, you know, you're going to be our way of getting certified. Um, they actually, you actually have to be the owner of the business, make all the day-to-day. -day. You can't just be a figurehead when you're trying to do these certifications. They're trying to get away from that and the fraud in the uh, certifications. Um, you must be an independent business. Um, and again, this was the same as with the um, DBE. Um, you have to be an independent business. Um, not controlled by anyone else. It has to be your own business. Um, um, must be substantial and continuing. Um, shall be going on the pro forma ownership of the applicant concern as reflected in its ownership documents. Um, so again, we're going back to your ownership documents. You have to provide those ownership documents. So make sure that they say that you have the ownership and the control of the business. Um, you can't rely upon non WMBE LGBT individuals or entities for financial management or technical assistance or other resources to the extent that is not in control of its business destiny. So again, it goes back to being in control, in control of the board, in control of the company. Um, it's all about control of your business. You have to be an independent business. Um, so I hope that gets across to everyone, you know, that you have to have a legitimate business. Your documents have to reflect what you're saying to get the certification. You can't have a figurehead um, just to get the certification. All the documents have to, have to show that. Um, you have to show that you are in control of business. Some of these, um, I think the CPUC, this one, they actually come out and investigate um, your location, your business um, to make sure. Um, I think this one and the DBE, they both do that. Okay, and then applying for the WBE. Um, here's a website, you can click on it when you get the slides. Um, you can do the, do I qualify? Go through all those answers and you can apply. Um, there was also some good information on news and events. They have a lot of training events. Um, we haven't really given much information about WBE before because there's not a whole lot of information about it. Um, so I had to go digging to find all of this information. I did write them and ask them um, if they could send me some slides or some information on what I could present here today. Um, uh, they just responded and said that they were working on it. So um, what I've given you today is everything that I've gleaned from this website and from other websites that I put together. Um, if you're looking 
Um, they do have new news and events, and they also have training down here. Um, you can click on training and see if they have more training on um, the certification. But everything I gave you today is, is what they have presented here on how to qualify. Um, so I wanna make sure I present that to you. It's just another um, certification that you can go after. Um, I think I have a slide here. With the, there we go. Um, these are all the CPUC um, participating utilities. So all of these utilities have to um, have a goal to use the minority, the woman-owned, um, DVBE. Um, there's no mandate for LGBT yet, but um, LGBTQ, sorry. Um, so, but I just want you to understand that, you know, these are um, companies that you could get contracts with. If you get those certifications, you can um, check and see what they're looking for. Um, they do have a uh, bid board here. You can see what's, what's coming up. Um, once you're certified, you could um, reach out to the company um, to see what they, they are looking for. I didn't see anywhere which showed what exactly they're buying, but it's a utility. So um, you can imagine anything um, under utilities that they would buy. Um, they would be looking for someone who has the certification so that they can meet their goals for the year. Okay, we're gonna go back to questions. We got a few minutes. A few minutes. And, and uh, uh, for one. those of you who need to jump off right at 11, um, just uh, note that you will be getting the slides. And I'm also gonna put in a survey into the chat. You're gonna, you're gonna be redirected towards the survey as you leave. Just let us know what you thought of the event. Um, we know this is uh, drinking information from a fire hose, not something from a teacup. So um, it's a big overview. If you want more information, go to your local PTAC um, or your WBC, Women's Business Center, to get uh, general business assistance. Okay, um, Vanessa's asking, do you need to be registered in SAM to apply for DBE? Yeah. I know we're getting some delayed, so yes. Yeah, uh, because it's a, yeah, because it's a federal, it's actually a federal certification, so. Mm -hmm. Can't so be Karen, dependent. Karen's asking, Nancy said that your business service can't be dependent on another business to produce the contract item. I do stationary and subcontract printers and bindery. Would that be ineligible? Um, no, because they aren't giving you money. You're, you're subcontracting to get your product to sell, um, if that makes sense. Um, this would um, say it was me, and then I am in, you know, working with my husband. He has a, a similar company, and I'm asking if I can borrow some employees or um, borrow some money because I'm short for, for pay this month or something like that. That would be you're not independent, then you're relying on somebody else. If your business is to subcontract to do part of it, you know, they're not giving you money, you're paying them to do that for you. So um, I hope that clears it up for you. Let me know if it doesn't, you can type in. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. That's how the world of yeah. business works. You yeah. have to get your goods and services from right. somewhere. Everyone yeah. buys things and contracts and things. Yeah, when it says independent, that means you're not relying on anyone else. Like I said, you're not asking someone from employees, you're not asking someone to help you cover your bills. You know, you're independent owned and you can manage all your business. Reese is asking, what if the company is a partnership and both are minority and, uh, both are minority and women? Well, that's okay then. You wouldn't, um, you wouldn't have to do the 51% because you're both 50, 50, 100% owners and you're both women. So you would still qualify for the woman owned small business. It's just if you're um, say a husband and wife you know, the wife would need 51%. Um, or if you're a partner with just, you know, a gentleman or, um, you know, you do, you just need to reach that 51% if you're the only woman in the business. Okay. Got a bunch of interesting questions here. We may not have time to go <laughs> all of them, um, but this is an interesting one. If a business is a corporation and 51% owned by women, women run the day to day and make all the decisions, but the board president is, a, is, is not a woman. Um, does that count? So what if the, does the board president have to be a woman as well? Well, that depends on how much power that board president has. Is there like a CEO or someone else that's over the board president? Yeah, this is, I, this is getting a little more complicated. 
feel free to reach out to your local PTAC or yeah. email if you have any remaining questions. Um, so Carolyn's asking if the figurehead retires or stops being part of the business, are the certifications immediately invalidated? Well, I don't like the use of the word figurehead. Um, <laughs> that I, was is, saying, I was saying don't. Point. Yeah, it's not a figurehead. It's not it's a figurehead. Leader. Yeah. It's so, um, um, so say the woman who runs it, she cashes in all of her stock and then it immediately turns to a male oriented. Um, I would, you would have to get with the SBA probably and um, let them know of the occurrence. Um, and then they would probably take that certification away. Um, I can't be for sure though. Um, I don't have you know that off the top of my head. That was something I have to look up about things outside me. I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna rephrase this question a little bit. Um, for the WBE, it sounds like. Um, okay. Is it eligible or useful for uh, services that are outside of the utility industry? Well, you know, it's kind of like the government, they kind of buy everything. So if you can, um, I don't know what the major things are that they put out on their bid board. You might want to, you know, look at that bid board or reach out to the CPUC and see if they have a list of items that those, um, that those companies buy. Um, like I said, I tried to contact them and um, I kind of got a standoff <laughs> um, thing when I said I was going to do training on it. Um, so um, the best thing might be to call that number on that. Uh, let's see, is there a number on that? Or contact them. If they have some type of contact, maybe when you log in or maybe under the about, I'm sorry, I can't click, this isn't clickable, but maybe under the about us, there's a phone number you could call and see if mm. they can tell you what they actually buy. Like I said, I tried to get that, you know, more information for the slides, but all I got was the basic information, so. Right, and in this presentation, we're going over the federal government, state government, all different branches of government. And so we have some market research questions, which are really excellent, but too, too broad to really see uh, address in this context. So again, would suggest working with a local PTAC or something like that mm -hmm. to dive in the databases, a lot of different right. databases to actually see what kind of bids are out there, what has been purchased in the past, forecasts for what's going to be purchased in the future. Okay. And, and see I where think, you fit in. Yeah. And I think the Debbie King question, I can't really answer that. Um, okay. Um, we can see it's it's 11.05 now. If yeah. we have a little bit of a tag on, is that's that's the last of your presentation answer? Yeah. You have a uh, oops. <laughs> um, just real quick, here's some other certifications. Um, you know, you can click on all these and go look at them, but there's the 8A business development. If you have a DBE, that kind of helps the 8A to business development. Hub zone, if you are in an underutilized business zone, you may qualify for the hub zone certification. Um, if you're a woman and a services sale veteran owned small business, you can get the dual certification. Um, the California, California has the SBE and the DVBE certification. So small business entity and disabled veteran business entity certification. Um, then of course the other clearinghouse certifications we talked about minority business, LGBTQ. Um, and then Liz let me know yesterday that BART has a minority uh, women business entity certification, which I included the link you could go look at, and there's a document checklist. And I don't, we don't have time for a summary. Um, you can do a brief summary, yeah. just to go over. Okay. Well, I'm going to put up the events so they can look at those on talking about the... Okay, so today we had like a fire hose... Uh, <laughs> of what different women-owned small business certifications are out there. The big one, of course, is the federal WOSB um, and EDWSB. Um, that's the big one if you want to do federal government contracting. If you're not interested in federal government contracting, um, then don't worry about getting the WSB, EDWSB. Go ahead and go through um, maybe one of the women business um, uh, Chamber of Commerce's Chamber of Commerce to get a WBE. Of course, that costs money. Um, you can go through the CPUC to get a woman-owned business entity that will help with some of the cities and states. Um, and then the, C, the 
the DBE, um, if you happen to be in type of a transportation or any company like that, there is a women-owned designation there. Um, so those are the three that we covered today. I know it was a fire hose, but if you look, we have um, Liz's really good presentation on disadvantaged business entity. Um, and again, this is the federal certification that comes through the state to work on Department of Transportation type um, contracts. Um, so this can be anything from landscaping to um, um, environmental services. Um, there's a lot of things that go into transportation. If you go to Liz's um, um, webinar on the 21st, she can give you more information. And then I'm gonna go through just the WSB, EDWSB on October 28th. So you'll get a little more in depth on that program. So two of the programs I talked about today, I know I'm sorry that you have to take another webinar, um, but today was just meant to be an overview of what's out there. Um, so come back and see us on these two if you're interested in those. Um, if you're interested in the CPUC, um, check and see if they have a training coming up or contact them about um, what they offer. Um, I gave you tons of links to go to. Um, you know, get with your local PTAC if you're not one of our clients. Um, if you're in our area and not a client, then, you know, become a client and, you know, we can work together on getting your certifications done. And then I am doing SBA tools for marketing and subcontracting on October 19th. So um, I'll be doing these two and Liz will be doing this one. So um, come back and, and take some more webinars and learn some more. Right. And I've just published a poll here. I'm going to share the results. Looks like a lot of you want to get the WOSB, okay. EDF, DBE, yeah. WU certifications. Only a couple of you weren't interested okay. in any of those. So we hope that that has been helpful. I think there's another slide on, on, on upcoming events. Just keep in mind, we have tons of events that we're always doing at NorCal Tech. Yeah. You can find all of them on our calendar. Um, we've got a Veterans Business Week coming up in November. So um, stay tuned and uh, apply to your local WBC if you need help with anything that's not directly related to government contracting. They're really awesome. Yeah. Uh, Darlene is super helpful. So if you're in the Oakland area, you're lucky enough to work with Darlene. Yeah. Next webinar, we're going to be partnering with Nine and Gibbs from the Jedi. So if you're up in the Shasta area, um, stay tuned for that as well. They are also super helpful. Um, and they're all in place. So Yeah. And if you're interested in the uh, Chamber of Commerce certifications, um, Darlene should have information on that or any of those agencies that she listed. If you're closer to one of them, um, they can help you with those, the Women ch Business Chamber of Commerce type of certifications if you're interested in those. Yes. Feel free to reach out to us. Thank you. All right, well, let's go ahead and cut it off here. Um, if you had any questions that weren't answered, as you can see, we did our best. Um, let's go ahead and answer, what did we answer? 53 questions, so that's not bad for uh, our webinar. Um, and apply for your WBC, apply for your uh, SBDC, apply for your local PTAC. There's a hundred of us across the country um, and keep joining our webinars. And I put a survey in the link uh, survey link in the chat. If you could click on that and just let us know how we thought, we would be really, really appreciative. We like learning um, how to improve our services, including these mm -hmm. services we offer to you. Um, and hope to see you at future events. And thanks again to Darlene for the participation. Um, and thanks to everyone for joining. Yeah, thanks everyone. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Have a good Thursday.